Merry morning here. And now for something completely different. <laughs> uh, today I'm doing the seamstress tag. So I'm talking about sewing. Uh, one of my favorite hobbies to do. And so I'll just go ahead and get started. I believe the tag was originally done by Holly Dolly. I'll put the link below to her original video so that you can check it out. Um, I've gone through a few of the different videos and found some new favorite people to subscribe to, so I would recommend doing that as well if you are interested in sewing. There's some great channels out there. I haven't really watched a lot of sewing channels, so I'm discovering lots of new people to follow, which is amazing. So, uh, question number one, who are you? Mary Morning. I go by online, but uh, Mary Bart is my real name. Um, I live in Ontario, Canada, originally from the Seattle area in the States. Um, yeah, I, I have an online business, uh, Etsy store selling gothic clothing called Autumn Moon Enchantment. So you can find me there. I do a lot of local craft shows and that kind of thing, selling dresses and um, I do a lot of cloaks. Uh, do a lot of fantasy type of dresses, so gothic dresses, lots of velvet. Um, I do cloaks, um, medieval style dresses, um, pinup style dresses. Um, that's kind of my style, my go-to thing. Uh, when, when and why did you start sewing? <laughs> um, well, I'll give you the short history then, uh, or long history. Um, I guess I started like most sewers back uh, when I was a kid. I was making um, Barbie clothes, uh, cutting up like little scraps of old clothing or sheets or whatever my mother would let me cut up. <laughs> Um, so I started designing for Barbies. Um, when I got into high school, I guess that's when I first started doing real sewing because uh, we had a, um, a home ec class, they called it back then, which included sewing. And we made, I don't know, like a, an apron and a pillow and and stuff like that and um, then we started getting into making some clothing which I don't know I just that was my thing I, I you know I made the first dress and I was hooked from then on and and I think I started originally sewing like more like alterations like in high school, we would go to the thrift stores, we would buy old dresses, 50s dresses. Sorry guys for the vintage lovers, but this is what we did back in the 80s. We would buy these 50s dresses. They were cheap back then. They were everywhere in the thrift stores. You could find them everywhere. And we would uh, cut them up, you know, distress them. Um, yeah, we'd pretty much destroy them as far as like maybe dye them a different color, cut them up, put safety pins on them, um, you know, sew on lace appliques and change them. And, you know, it was very pretty and pink kind of thing where you would take all these old clothing and you would restyle them. Um, at the time, you know, that style was really popular. There were uh, a few people that I kind of followed fashion-wise that I kind of took what they would wear and you know make it my own like Patricia Morrison uh, there was uh, Stevie Nicks big influence from Stevie Nicks um, Cindy Lauper Madonna they all kind of wore in the 80s they all wore that vintage style that was revamped like it was really popular back then uh, so I have one of my very first things that I made was lace gloves like Madonna's so yeah that kind of <laughs> that kind of started it 
<laughs> um, and then I would go on and like, you know, rip up, you know, different clothing like uh, like t-shirts. You would cut cut them up. You would um, totally alter them. Um, you know, nothing I wore was like in one piece. It was all re-sewn or ripped up or bleached or something weird. <laughs> Uh, and even our jeans back in the 80s, you couldn't buy jeans that were skinny enough. You'd have to peg the legs. So my sewing really came out of necessity more than, like you couldn't just go buy this stuff in the stores. So it came out of necessity of wanting that style, but you couldn't just go buy it at the mall. So you had to, you had to learn how to sew to make it. Um, so that's really where I kind of got into it. And then... Um, Let's see, I started working, we moved to Cleveland for a while, and I started my first major job there, working at a high-end department store, and I needed to look very professional, and this was oh, late 80s into early 90s. Uh, we moved back to Seattle in 92, so it would have been like 89 to 92, 88 to 92, somewhere in there. And I needed to wear very professional clothing to this department store. Back then, you really dressed up to go to work. Um, so I started, you know, picking up Vogue magazine and trying to copy, you know, whatever was in the magazine, the latest style, and make it in my colors. And, and you know, so I did a lot of tailoring, a lot of suit jackets, a lot of um, fitted skirts, uh, that kind of thing back then. Moved back to Washington after that, still working at a department store, really got into making a lot of velvet then, so that would have been like 92, yeah, 92, um, and I really loved uh, the velvets, the, the brocades, like those dark, rich fabrics, but they were so expensive to buy back then. You know, Jessica McClintock was one of the major designers for that um, back then. And those dresses were so expensive. So, again, I would just make them. I made a lot of my clothing um, from when I worked at the department stores, like pretty much the whole time. Uh, let's see. Then I worked at a fabric store. Well, I worked at four different fabric stores throughout my life, starting back in high school time to present but um well I don't work there now but just recently I worked at another one <laughs> um but okay so the fabric store uh they had a deal where they loved to have the employees make samples that they would put up in their stores so if you made the the like a, an outfit and they would hang it in their store put it on a mannequin and you know stay in the store for maybe two months or so and then you could have it so of course I wanted to take advantage of that and I just constantly constantly made things so I would finish one giant outfit to put up in the store and then I'd start another one because I wanted it to you know every every two months or so I'd get myself a new outfit and so that was uh, a great deal, but it kind of burnt me out as far as sewing because I remember sewing a lot back then and my son was little. So it was more like I would sew in the time that I could get. It wasn't like I had chunks of time to sew back then. It was more like, okay, a half an hour here, you know, a half an hour there. <laughs> and by the end of the week, you know, or two weeks, you might have a whole outfit to, you know, put on display. And then, of course, I would make other things in between as well that uh, maybe the store didn't want me to make that particular outfit for them. So I would just make it on my own. So I was constantly sewing. And then that kind of burnt me out for sewing for a while. Um, and like most sewers, I just ended up taking a long break and, uh, and went, ended up going into a job where I was doing decor instead. And, um, I think my fashion sense kind of 
went in the toilet while I was doing that because uh, I was so focused on design and that kind of thing for the home that I wasn't paying attention to what I was wearing. So, um, yeah. And then I met uh, a few friends that sew. And I, it's funny, like I met them all at the same time. One I already knew from uh, a, the design job who is one of my good friends and we didn't even know each other sewed when <laughs> we were working together doing decor like you know we kind of mentioned oh yeah I did curtains blah 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 but both of us are like sewers <laughs> and we didn't even know that about each other at the time so now she uh, since leaving that job, she now uh, designs wedding dresses and does big things. I've gone on to do my own little business doing um, the gothic dresses. So it's funny that, you know, we barely talked sewing back then and now we talk sewing all the time because we both are doing that kind of thing. Which leads me to present where I'm making lots of dresses and a lot of the stuff I make now is stuff that I made back in the early 90s. So it's not like I've changed my style. It's just, um, it's pretty classic. Like it stays in style. It, you can constantly wear this stuff. It doesn't go out. Um, I do a lot of the pinup style, a lot of the gothic dresses, um, all of that stuff. And it, you know, it comes and goes, maybe in major fashion, but within the gothic community, it doesn't ever go out of style. So, that's my history. <laughs> uh, let's see, what is your favorite or proudest make? Oh, there's been a lot of them over the years, but I, I would say actually some of the more recent ones that I've made for other people have been um, some of my proudest work. Uh, we did a fashion show last year where I, I kind of went outside my comfort zone and made some really beautifully tailored um, evening gowns, which or, ordinarily I don't wear an evening gown. I will wear our fancy velvet dresses all the time. To me, that's, that's almost normal wear, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, bigger dresses, and, and by that I mean like the one dress... I wish I had a picture to show you, but it was um, a very slim, tailored dress. Uh, the lady that wore it um, is a burlesque girl. She's a beautiful figure, and it just fit her perfectly and so pretty on her that I think that's probably one of my favorite makes. It was black with silver sequins. I did the long dress with an overskirt she can take off, um, kind of like, I think it's, oh, Audrey Hepburn wears a dress like that, that has very slim and then has an overskirt. And then I also did a little capelet to match it, it's so cute on her. Um, let's see, what is your most disastrous make? Oh. There's been a few, like, you know, back when I was starting out, I can remember when I was doing all that tailoring way back when, and I didn't have a serger back then either. Like, we had to, I had to finish my own seams with, like, seam binding and, and all of that. I got really good at it, but there were some real um, bombs in there, too, that, yeah, I don't have anything like that. Um, anymore but oh yeah <laughs> I think every sewer you know you, you end up, oh I remember one <laughs> this was back yeah probably like uh, college time when I was in college and um, Berta patterns used to not have seam allowance on them you had to add the seam allowance to Berta patterns and for some reason, I didn't know this. This was uh, st just starting out. And I made this dress. And because 
It didn't have seam allowances. I think it was like this big when I got it done. So yeah, it was like princess seamed, very cute uh, sundress style, very similar to what I wear now. But yeah, I, there's no way I was getting into that because I had made it with with uh, out adding the seam allowance. But I, I'm pretty sure Berta has changed that probably many years ago. They don't do that anymore. Oh, let's see. What is your favorite place to go fabric shopping? Well, I live close to downtown Toronto, so that's my favorite place to go, Queen Street in Toronto, which is a fashion district. Um, so we basically have a whole street full of fabric stores that have high-end stuff, um, everything you can think of, silks, velvets, brocades, whatever you want, wools, um, cottons, whatever, you name it, it's there on Queen Street, trims, all of it. Um, so that's a treat to go downtown Toronto, and one of my favorite stores there is Downtown Fabrics, and I go in there, Arden Beads for beads. Yeah, there's, there's some great places to go around here. We also have a second fabric district. We're so spoiled because in Hamilton, there's another one. And they're both pretty much equal distant from me. They're both about 45 minutes away from me. So if I wanted to um, get something different, I go to Hamilton. Hamilton has um, a store called Ann's Fabrics that sells a lot of stretch velvets, um, a lot of dancewear, that kind of thing. And uh, we're, yeah, we're just so spoiled. I have. Um, we don't have a fabric land right here in my town, but it's the next town over, so it's maybe 25 minute drive, 20 minute drive or so to the fabric land, which is a nice store. They carry lots of different things, but that would be more your run of the mill fabrics. They're more fashion focused. There's another one called Lens Mill that carries a lot of cotton, um, novelty prints like the dress that I'm wearing would have been a lens mill print. spoiled I don't do a lot of online shopping for fabric it's it's just too easy and too cheap to find it here uh, there are some things that are hard to find like a good brocade right now seems to be difficult to find and that I might try and source online so if anybody knows some links for that that'd be great uh, what is your most used pattern um, the one that I of design myself my fairy sweaters that I sell in Etsy I made the most of those and I changed them up I, I make them different I recently made one out of velvet and that was so so pretty made it for a friend I haven't made a velvet one for myself yet but that's definitely on the list to make one um, let's see your most dreaded sewing task is alterations Please, please do not give me alterations. To, I'm just warning my friends. <laughs> never give me anything to alter. Because if I don't want to do it, I will take forever to do it. I, I and, and alterations is one of them. I just really do not enjoy alterations. Um, so yeah, don't don't give those to me. <laughs> I like making something from start to finish. What is uh, your favorite sewing task? Um, I like sewing with knits a lot. I like sewing with velvets. I like sewing with stretch materials a lot because those are fun. Uh, I like doing lace trim on things. Um, I like doing a lot of hand work. I don't do a lot of hand sewing. Um, but yeah, I enjoy, like it's very relaxing to sit and do handwork. 
Uh, I used to cross stitch years ago, but I just haven't done that for a really long time. Mm, let's see, what is your favorite sewing entertainment? So I'm by that I'm guessing what you have on in the background while you're sewing, which would be most likely uh, one or two things. You either have a horror movie going on, <laughs> So, because uh, uh, I'm a horror movie geek, and usually Hammer Horror is my favorite type of movie. Gothic movies are my favorites. Um, so I'll have some old horror movie on in the background, which I've probably seen a million times, so it's not going to be a big deal if I'm not watching it. Um, I've watched, you know, several TV shows in a row kind of thing over and over again, like Buffy or... Um, Angel or I don't know I can't even think right now but I've watched several TV shows over and over again just on the background I also like to listen to youtubers um, so I have a lot of witchy YouTube channels I follow um, sewing ones now a lot of gothic uh, fashion uh, YouTube channels that I listen to and watch but yeah that's what I usually do and let's see next question printed or PDF patterns you know what I've never gotten into the whole indie pattern craze I have not bought any kind of downloadable patterns and the only indie patterns I've bought because I kind of pulled these because I, I saw this question is the Gertie patterns, which are adorable. So those are the only two I have ordered online as far as like independent patterns, and I haven't even made them yet. Um, although I'm dying to make those. But yeah, I have bins and bins and bins of printed patterns um, from working in all those fabric stores for since high school <laughs> i still have patterns in those bands from high school picture that <laughs> so i probably have a good four large bins full of patterns and no i will never get rid of those because a lot of them are in fact most of them are out of print their old costume patterns, their old vintage style patterns. Um, you know, some of them I bought back in the 80s. They're, there's just, it's a gold mine. So why would I need to go online and print patterns when I have crazy amounts of patterns already? So, um, <coughs> not that I haven't been tempted by some of the indie patterns. They're, they're very cute, but I, I really, I can't justify buying new patterns. <laughs> um, what sewing machine do you use? I prefer using Fox. Uh, my first sewing machine was from my father. My father sewed. And so he gave me his old Fox that was metal. I still have it. It's not in the best working condition. I need to um, have it tuned up. But I still do have it. And that machine will pretty much sew through anything. But the difference with FOF is that they have a walking foot on them. So it kind of pulls the, the top layer of the fabric through as well as the bottom. So you have your feed dogs on, on the bottom and then you have the walking foot on the back or on the top. So it pulls from both sides, which is different from a lot of sewing machines. And I just find I've, I've used different ones and there's just something about FOFs. They sew perfectly it's just a nice finish to them. So my one that I use all the time is a Foff 1467. And my husband bought that for me back in 92. When we moved back to Seattle, that was when he bought that machine for me. So yeah, it's, it's vintage itself now. <laughs> um, but it still works great. I... I have sewn on some of the new FOFs that are electronic uh, because a friend has one and they're beautiful. 
I don't know if I can justify the price of them, considering I can do everything I need to do on the one that I have. But I would definitely be tempted if I had the money to, to go and, and get one of those new machines. Um, and then my serger is up off as well. That would be this one. That was my oldest one. And then my newer one is the Kenmore, which I like too. Um, yeah, I, I, and I have a lot of vintage sewing machines, but I really don't, I don't use them. I don't use them. I use my thaw. And if I were to do anything to it and that, I would just go and have it fixed. You know, I'd probably use one of my vintage machines to, to sew while it was in the, in the shop, but I would want my thaw back. Um, and last question, do you have any other hobbies? <laughs> no, not really. Uh, sewing. Sewing is pretty much the only hobby. Um, reading, I guess. We consider that a hobby. I like to read a lot of books. Um, let's see. I think outside the box here. Um, I like to mountain bike with my husband, although I haven't done a lot of it recently. Kind of getting out of shape, so I need to get back into that. And we have a classic car, so we like to, I don't know if this counts as a hobby, but we love to take the classic car in the summer and just go for long drives. We go to car shows, we go, go for long drives, that kind of thing. Um, that's what we do in the summer. So, I don't know if that qualifies, but it's kind of a hobby. So, that's the end of the seamstress tag. Maybe you know me a little better now as a sewer. And I intend on doing more videos about sewing. I think I'm going to kind of branch out and do some different stuff now. Uh, and get in more into that. And I challenge my friend, Madame Absinthe, to do a seamstress tag. So I'd like to see you do the seamstress tag. I will send you the questions. And I think that's it. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.